Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 2nd, 2016. This first one is from my friend Tony F. And this is from Bloomberg News. I've also got another article that relates to it that I'll talk about in just a minute. But this is entitled, uh, See Through Solar is Tomorrow's Threat to Oil. Now, I don't think See Through Solar is, see -through solar is going to be a threat to oil any time in the future. But this visible type of... Uh, uh, panels where you, the light actually passes through it and you can use them for clear window panels is certainly a decent idea. Now this article is from about a year ago but uh, this one, the way that uh, this company, it's called Ubiquitous Energy, the way they're developing it, it looks to me like if you watch the video and there are videos involved here too, you can watch it, they're short videos. What is happening here is this is applied to a regular glass like a film so I think this could be a great thing as far as a retrofit to buildings like this. Now, I don't know enough about it, and they don't give enough details in the article. Maybe there's uh, a lot more to it than this, and there probably is more than this, that you can't just take something like a squeegee or a paintbrush and just paint it onto a regular glass window. But that's basically what they are talking about, though, is a coating um, to make it um, a, co a transparent coating that actually produces solar energy. Now, the one thing about this is since you're allowing visible light through, the only other things, the only other types of light that you can use to produce the energy are lights that can be absorbed, and that would be your ultraviolet and your infrared light. So they are actually opaque to those um, types of light. So you will lose about a third of your efficiency when you're figuring out maybe solar panels are about 30% efficient to start with. You're going to talk about maybe 20%, and since it's just in development, they talk in the video that it may be, by the time it reaches market, it may only be about 10% efficient. But if you can put these things up all over the place, the problem with typical solar panels is you can't just put them on buildings wherever. you got to put them up on the roof of the building. You can't put them on the sides because they're you know, pretty much not transparent, and you want transparent glass. So with this you could actually use it in place of the window glass in the second article that I'm referring to and this is from uh, Michigan State University and what they're doing is they're taking transparent window glass and then they're taking the edges of the transparent window glass and making the edges into solar panels using regular solar panel, panel materials and by the way they're making the glass they're actually taking and directing the light to the edges of the glass itself and, and taking some of the light there so you may not Maybe you couldn't call these 100% transparent, maybe 90%, 80% transparent, but still for uh, the sides of buildings, I, I think you've seen a lot of those too, and they're not fully transparent anyway. They've got the reflective coatings and things like that. So if you get a chance, read the article from Extreme Tech where they've got this competing uh, thing, you know, a competing way of uh, actually doing clear solar panels. But since both of these articles from about a year ago, I think we're looking at typical development times. If it's pretty quickly, they may be done with it in a couple of years. So we may be looking at maybe one year later, a year from now, these things actually coming to market, at least in some form, even if it's just test setups or something like that, some actual practical versions of these things that we can see working instead of just in laboratories. So <clears throat> this next one is from my friend Papa Tutu Ray. Samsung Smart Windshield needs to get into production as soon as possible. And this one has a YouTube video to about one hour, one hour, about one minute, 18 seconds video and it's uh it doesn't project up onto the windshield it's got a little transparent thing below the windshield that projects where you can look down slightly and see what's going on and it hooks up to your cell phone and it'll project things about your traveling and your gps and stuff like that but one thing that kind of concerns me too is it's uh it's talking about giving you information that you receive phone calls and that you've received texts from people and then responding to the text now they're trying to make it appear that it's going to be safe because it doesn't show it displaying the text so that you would try to read the text somebody sent you but if you're getting sent a lot of text you're going to be looking down to see who text texted you and then talking or whatever way it, method it uses to uh, uh, tell it to send back a text you know like a, a pre preformed text that you have like I'm driving I'll get back to you soon or something like that I still think this could if they don't do this the right way and with the right implementation this thing could be just about as unsafe as looking down at text messages and then uh, texting back and forth and it's just doing it in the form of a motorcycle extra windshield kind of deal so um, that doesn't give me real great confidence about that but I mean if you put some limitations on it and everything though and because of the fact that it just uses the transparent glass and you don't have the whole component that's the other thing I'm kind of concerned about too is somebody actually stealing it thinking this is you know an expensive electronic item but if it's just a, a clear piece of plexiglass or something similar to that that doesn't look like it has anything hooked up to it very much People would tend to steal it so much. They just, you know, think it was something really, really ordinary, and all the 
um, electronics and everything like that are pretty much housed in your smartphone that make it operate so it would be less subject to, to uh, um, that kind of threat of getting stolen or something like that and this last article was sent to me by Tom Navy Thomas 8 elephants en route to Omaha despite activist effects to block transport now there's three different articles involved with this I'm just gonna talk about this one because I heard about it on the PBS uh, radio, the Wisconsin Public Broadcasting Radio that I listened to, the protesters about the uh, 18 elephants that were taken from Swaziland, and uh, I'm, I really can say that, yeah, I don't like the idea of just, you know, buying elephants to bring them over for, here to display, but that was not what this was all about. I mean, the Henry Dorley Zoo and a couple of other zoos got these groups of elephants to pretty much save their lives. If you see some of the video on here, these elephants were coming in rather emaciated, and I guess there's a really bad drought going on where these elephants are coming from so this may have been a, a rescue for these elephants I guess Wichita and Dallas are gonna get six of them each too so the 18 elements elephants will be housed in three groups and they're gonna be kept together in social groups they they claim that the group that went to Omaha is all six elephants are part of one social group so that's another problem with elephants too if you just uh, send elephants over to zoos willy-nilly they're not necessarily acclimated to be in that group they haven't spent time together and and socialize together. They're very social animals. So, um, give me your thoughts. Look at the uh, look at the article I'm posting, and then look at the two side articles. One's called Six Swaziland Elephants Coming to Henry Dorley Zoo," and the other one is "Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium Approved for Elephants." So, give me your opinions. What do you think? Do you think we should just uh, let them uh, stay in a place if they're in danger of uh, starvation or dying from dehydration, and it's uh, we have a chance to rescue them. Should we try to do it, or should we just, you know, let nature take its courses and let the elephants die? Now, you know, I can see just not, you know, let's not just steal all the elephants from Africa or all the animals from any particular region. But if we can step in and rescue it and keep a, especially family groups together and keep them alive, I think that can end up being a good thing. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Thank you, uh, all three of you guys, for sending in the information for uh, this week's TDD report. I really appreciate. Con contributions and all the contributors that make it possible. So I will catch you next week.